as I walked into the museum, into the gallery of the Roman and Greek antiquities, this particular piece really caught my attention. This piece has a painting on the front of it of a mummified woman and various other artifacts along the coffin. The painting on the top half of this coffin is actually the picture of the woman who has passed and it is resting inside of it. I have learned in this class that it is a custom to paint the portrait of who has passed on the front of the coffin, the funeral portrait as it is called. This is also a custom highly imitated by the Romans. In the photo I took of this particular coffin, this was made out of what seemed to look like wood, wearing a large colorful collar and some jewels or gems on it. This woman doesn't seem to appear as wealthy as others like Tutankhamun's solid gold coffin just because this one is made out of wood and not gold. But we have to keep in mind that it did seem to appear that she had some jewelry. Not everyone back then was able to get their hands on that. I would say this type of art would have meant anger for some of the people. I say anger because not everyone got a chance to be buried in a coffin and certainly did not have their face painted on it nor jewelry. For some it meant remembrance, memories of the glorified ones, or just simply someone higher up in the society. This artwork makes me feel so curious as to how they worked in their society, how creative they were to come up with these signs and symbols, well pretty much their language, another way they communicated in their world back then. It makes me want to go back in time to explore the ways of the Egyptians. The way the artist has drawn on the coffin makes me wonder how they did it and what they used to do so. It's amazing how detailed they can be. Like said in the museum's interpretation, wood, fabric, gesso, and pigment was used. Another thing is the woman with the wings. She's kneeling with her wings spread out as, and a sun right above her head with sort of a sad or confused face. What exactly do these mean? This changes my life and opens my eyes to see that every culture is very different. The way it works and where some end up. It makes me want to keep researching and find a lot more of how they used to do other various things. It also teaches me how the Egyptians bury their loved ones and how you or us as a society can do so many things and go so far without technology what many people nowadays cannot seem to live without. At the museum, they wrote about this piece saying, Strikingly painted with the stylized face of the woman who is mummified remains it presumably once held. The wooden box and lid bear ornament across nearly every exterior face, including back and front and foot. Beneath this simple wig and large old collar is the largest of several scenes related to the so-called Egyptian Book of the Dead, with a sky goddess nut kneeling and spreading her wings. Further down appear the weighing of the heart and the mummification, two Ionix funeral scenery involving Anubis, canine-headed god of the dead. The largest register of hieroglyphic inscriptions identifies the deceased as Shesep Amun Teyes Heret, daughter of Padini, her father, and Hathor M. Akit, her mother. During recent conversation, conversation work of small glass bed and impressions of text wrapping, were found within sarcophagus. My interpretation of this piece was semi close to what the artist said, but not nearly as accurate. I wasn't sure of a lot of the drawings underneath the face of the deceased, and I really need to learn a lot more about Egyptians before I can make accurate accusations of the piece and its art on it. This definitely has been a learning experience.